Is that a bear? This guy has a bear in his room. Developed by Fire Games. Scott, Jenny, Garrett. The whole intro sequence. Okay. Huh. Please leave your message after the tone. Uh, hello, this is William, and you don't know me, but your cousin Michael works for me at Claustra Studios, and he has not shown up to work at all this week, and nobody in the office has heard from him. So, of course, I stopped by his house to see if he was okay, and his car was in the driveway, and I swear I thought I saw someone walk by the attic window, but nobody answered the door. Um, but I did find a note on the door, which is why I'm calling you. And it just has your name, number, and a message that says, finish the game. So, um, you know, Michael's known around the office for being uh, a little bit off, but this is strange, like really strange even for him. And, you know, as I'm sure you know, he typically keeps very to himself, but he has talked a little about you and how you guys used to write the, uh, uh, choose your own adventure stories together So, you know, I hope you know what this all means and of course I hope Michael is okay But we really need to get in touch with him. So when you get in touch with him, please tell him to call us at the office uh, Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye All right, we're going to finish the goddamn game. We're going to finish the game. Okay. Michael gave me this key to the house years ago. I don't know why, but he insisted I keep it. We haven't spoken in years. got a key to the house but not a key to the bedroom door okay very atmospheric this looks like a good enough time waster uh not interested in a time waster Picture of the living room. I've never seen this place before. It looks like it's only lit with a camera flash. Photograph of an old house. Wait, there's a note here. Journal entry. I've been at work pretty relentlessly trying to make something great. 
lot of the work has just been watching movies. Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Shining, etc. They're fine, but it needs something else. And I'm just not sure what. When I watch Jason Voorhees chasing campers, I feel nervous. Sure, but scared? I feel tense and I feel worried for the character. But I know that I'm okay, so I don't feel that horror. I don't feel like I'm in any danger. It feels so disingenuous. Plus, it's really difficult to capture that visual aspect of the tech with all the tech I have available. All I really have is text, text, and more text. I'm not much of a reader, but I really should check out the Shining novel. It could translate better to my games. I've thought more about it. I think I was wrong. Maybe the technology won't allow much in the way of visual horror, but that doesn't mean I can't find another way. I'll keep trying, but I think I'm on to something. I've got it. Okay. Oh, it was not a bear. It was a plant. Dr. Miller suggested I started writing my thoughts in a journal. According to her, it can help me sort through my difficult thoughts. I hate that term, difficult thoughts. I don't think wanting to create my best work is something to be thought of as difficult. Maybe I'll stick to it, but I really don't see what's happening. See that happening. I just got back home from work and I'm so sick of being there. No one understands my vision. I thought when I decided to work in computer games that I would be able to stretch my legs a bit and finally bring my art to the world, but no. The role is so tame. They say that my ideas are too dark. It's not too dark. It's horror. There's a difference. They want to make games about dragons, knights, and fucking fantasy quests. I frankly don't care about saving some princesses. Sh Princess. It's shallow. According to them, horror isn't marketable. We need to meet our quotas. No one will want to play something that's tw this twisted. Screw them, I'll do it myself. Okay. <clears throat> that was the sound. What's it doing there? It's a tape recorder. myself a bit more, you know? I'm, I'm really craving that creative freedom. I get there's a market for those fantasy games we make, but I, I just feel like I could be making more. Damn. What do you mean by more? Something real? Something that would make you feel something? I, I don't know. And is this feeling just related to work? No. But it's a big cause of it. Hmm. Okay. So, um, I did want to talk to you about what you wrote in your paperwork. There are certain things that I find concerning. I'd really like if we could talk about that, if you're able. Yeah, could we not? I, at least not yet. I'm, I'm just not... No, no, no. It's okay. I understand. We can circle back to that later, okay? Okay. All right. Boarded up. Okay, this is Dr. Miller. It's currently February 12th, 1983, and I'm talking with Michael Krieger, age 33. 32. Right, sorry, age 32. How are you feeling today, Michael? I mean, I've been worse. Been up to anything exciting? No, not really. I've been watching a lot of movies, but that's about it. 
Oh, what movies? Mostly horror movies. Oh, I can't. I can't watch those. I'm a bit too jumpy. Um, why? Why horror movies? I guess the feeling I'm trying to get. It's like I'm so numb. Maybe if I find the right movie, it'll make me feel something, but it's like... It's like none of them are enough. Hmm. I can see how that could be frustrating. Yeah. Um, uh, have you, uh, uh, been writing in a journal, like I suggested? Oh, yeah. I actually think I'm taken to it a bit more than I expected. Well, that's great to hear. Is there a reason you've had a change of heart about it? I know you weren't super thrilled last time we talked. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found a use for it. Well, that's really great to hear. So, um, I did want to ask about where we left off last. I know you don't like to talk about it, but... Are you having any more thoughts of hurting others? Hurting yourself? I, listen, I... I know what I wrote on the papers. It, it sounds bad, but it's more fantasy than anything. It, it's not like I'm planning on doing anything. They're just... They're just stories. I understand that, but... If they continue coming to mind, then... I promise. I'm okay. This guy has a, like, creative problem. He can't express we himself and, and he's not really fine. getting that reaction he wants this from the things Dr. that he's Miller. been making. It is March 20th, 1983, and I'm speaking with Michael Krieger, age 32. How are you doing today, Michael? Actually, um, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I've got something figured out. What do you mean by that? Like, uh... You remember last session, how I talked about feeling stuck? I think I found a way out. Oh, and, and how's that? I decided to make my own game. Something that no one at the company would understand. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, what does everyone at work think uh, about this? I... I haven't gone in a, in a few days. And why is that? I just... I, I, I feel stifled there. Yeah, I go back, but I need this time to work on my work. I need to focus on this one thing. Well, um, I'm glad you found something. But please remember, you need to take care of yourself, too. I know. I, I know. Trust me, this is all gonna be great. Well, it's, it's great that you found something. And don't I know it. And are you still writing in that journal? Oh, yeah, yeah. Would I be uh, allowed to see it? Mm, not just yet. It's, it's, it's not quite finished yet. Finished? Yeah, it's not done. I'm not... I'm not sure what you mean. Um, the journal isn't exactly something you finish. It's more like a continuous stream of thought. I know, just... just... <laughs> I'll let you look soon, okay? Zod. Dr. Miller says I'm using the journal wrong. She says I need to get out of my emotion and my anxieties. I'm not disturbed. I'm just passionate. She doesn't get it. Nobody gets it. I'm on the verge of creating the next evolution of horror entertainment and people are just saying my brain is fucked up for having those horrid thoughts. It's not like I think that way personally. Is David Argento? Argento? Sadistic because he directed a movie where dancers are getting sacrificed to a cult? No, people call him a genius. How is what I'm doing any different? I'm making a character. Multimedia. That's the key. I figured it out. I like where this is going. I've got a plan in place I just need to execute. Everyone's going to see that I'm a real artist. This game is going to be different than anyone has ever seen. My magnum opus. You know, I honestly kind of relate to this guy a little bit because, you know, you find yourself in a situation where you can't really express yourself and you just need that, that feeling of like you're doing something. You're actually doing something, you know. Okay. 
I need a data storage device. Can't crouch. Oh, I have no idea. Just some sort of clue. Why is it written front and back? Oh, shit. I gotta look at the back of something. Picture of a woman reading in her living room from outside a window. Who's taking this picture? Keep your phrases simple. Some commonly used commands are examine and go to, followed by your target. Okay, we don't need that yet. Uh, it's obvious this guy's taking pictures. There's ashtrays everywhere. Okay, so... We gotta look on the back. This thing over here said... Find the cat. On the fridge. Oh, one. This page is gone. Oh, it was a cassette there. Five. I could probably brute force it from there. I feel like I'm missing one. One, five. Three. Everything is in place. I haven't slept in days, but this is going to be worth every second of exhaustion. I keep getting calls from work asking where I've been. I don't see the point in answering them. Never understand. So why start now? I'm about to make a better game than any of those assholes could ever imagine. There are a lot of risks involved, but this is some really good stuff. Time to create true horror. I picked my playtester. I need someone special. Someone who I feel, feel that if anyone would understand the importance of what I'm doing. He didn't like my ideas when we were just writing stories, but I matured know how to execute everything is perfect one five three oops okay one is it five one three yeah order of the notes there it is, another one of Michael's games. Is this what he's talking about? Massacre 1983, game by Michael Krieger. <clears throat> Loading. Oh, actually, we should read the instructions now. You must specify if you'd like to use an item on something by typing your desired action followed by the object and the item. This format is action, object with item. Okay. Example, unlock the door with the key. Do not use punctuation in your commands. If you feel you've completed the task in an area, you can always type go back. Okay. You feel heavy with both the weight of your cargo and your conscience. As your bare toes grazed the asphalt beneath you, through her worn shoes, you marched onward. You knew exactly where to go next. The axe you lugged behind you made a screeching noise as the metal grinded across the street. Ooh, you arrive at your destination, the old Miller house, a quaint rustic home with two floors. There's a door directly in front of you. Beside you on your left is an old car to your right path to the backyard. Okay, examined 
old car. You take a look at the car. It's an old rusted sedan. There's a story to this car that you can't quite put your finger on. The smell is one of old scrapyards and metal work. You look through the window. The keys are sitting inside. Open the car door. The car door is locked. Okay. Uh... Um, so you on the left, to your right is a path to the backyard. You move quietly to the backyard. It's not as spacious as you would have thought, but the grass is trimmed perfectly. The patio is dimly lit by a dying light fixture. The back door sits at the end of the short stone path. Okay. Open the back door. Back door is locked. The door directly in front of you. You approach the front door. It's a beautiful shade of red. The architecture sets the scene perfectly. What's happening feels like a true moment. Axe to the front door. No, too much noise. Okay, open the front door. Door is locked. Okay. Okay, it's an old rusted sedan. Smash the window. Axe the window. The glass shatters with a loud crash, not too loud, you hope. Here inside the vehicle, there are a set of keys left on, out on the dash. Grab the keys. You grab the keys from the car. Alright. Go to the front door. Use the keys on the door. None of the keys seem to fit the lock. Okay, go back. Let's go to the backyard. Move quietly to the backyard. Go to the back door. Keys on the back door. Uh, examine back door. Examine the back door. Go to back door. Oh, it's in two. Use keys on the back door. The door unlocks with a lovely clicking sound. This is what you've been waiting for. Uh. Click the computer, trip the circuit. What the fuck? The tea kettle. How'd that fall? This is gonna be some Alan Wake shit. Everything that I fucking communicate in here. Is gonna happen. Out here, like in the actual world. That was his idea. Photograph of an old house. 
Okay. That's the vibe I'm getting anyways. Oh, let's save my progress. Step into the house, it feels almost like your own home. It's such a nostalgic structure. You can almost feel the lives that were created and lost by this house. And you want to be a part of that story. Crave to be a part of that story. Directly in front of you stands a staircase leading upstairs. To your immediate left is a small kitchen. Further onward, you can see the living room. <clears throat> Sam in the living room. You step into the living room. It's another part of that story. Pictures are hung up across the wall showing a happy, happy elderly couple. Young children are seen. You hear something? Young children are seen scattered amongst the photos. Grandchildren, you love them all. You're a part of their family and their story in your head. Okay, um. Go back. Examine kitchen. You move left into the kitchen. The room is very drab. Tile floors and walls make the whole place feel clinical. There's an odd smell emitting from a bowl of fruit on the table. You hate it there. You want to go back. Okay, let's go back. Let's go upstairs. You creep slowly on the stairs. You try with every ounce of your willpower. Not to let your ex bump up the stairs. The smile on your face is almost painful. The excitement is unbearable. You shake in eagerness. Up the stairs, you can see a, only a straight path to a bedroom. Go to bedroom. Oh. Examine bedroom. You sneak to the bedroom door. It's cracked open ever so slightly. You can feel the mild breeze of a running fan from inside. This is your time. Let's close that. Okay. Enter the bedroom. Walking inside, you step with such a care not to make any spots on the floor creak. You see an elderly couple laying in bed. They look at pe so at peace. Man sleeps comically with his mouth hanging open. The woman lays flat on her stomach. You want to look closer. Look closer. You approach the bed, you can see the man's chest rise up and down slowly, so, so slowly. It's your time. Uh. Use axe. Axe the couple. You raise the axe above. You remember it being heavier. This feels right. You grip at the base of the wooden handle with the greatest care before flinging the metal edge down on the man's stomach. His eyes jolt open as he flings himself for a moment trying to sit upright. Your smile hurts. The woman wakes up immediately. She's clearly distraught but is unable to make a sound. Her husband is still alive, choking on his own blood. You walk up to the woman slowly. She's so helpless. You raise the axe over your head with the same care and thrust it down between the woman's eyes. Her warm blood spatters your face. This feeling you could bathe in it. It's a rush to the likes of what you've never experienced. This is your family now. You're a part of this story. The man stops choking. Uh, okay. Knock, 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 knock. Knock, 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 knock. Those bloody footsteps were not there before. Alright, let's get here. Who was just at the door? Hello, my name is We Never Left. This is Dr. Miller. I'm speaking with Michael Krieger, age 32. Wait, did we see something? It is April 16th, 1983. How have you been doing, Michael? Michael, I asked, how are you? Don't act like you care. Excuse me? I know you don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not 
not sure where this is coming from. <laughs> I found the thing that makes me feel better. And you tell me it's wrong. I... Michael, I understand your frustration. But this project you're working on seems unhealthy. I understand you're passionate about this horror game, but some of the things you're writing seem sadistic. And I think it would be best if Don't we... Don't you dare tell me what's best for me, you fucking bitch! <sighs> um, I... I think we should take a step back and... No, I'm done with this! I found what makes me feel better, and I'm gonna stick with it. I'm about to create a masterpiece in gaming. Hell, I'm, I'm creating a masterpiece of any art form. Why would you want to take that away from me? I'm sorry, Michael, but I don't think this is good for you. Don't pretend like you know what's good for me. You know I've spent my whole life just wanting to create. I just want so bad to let the world know what's going on inside my brain. And I finally found the message I want to send. I'm going to be the horror auteur of the fucking millennium. Do you know what it's like? be told your entire life that your ideas are shit? It's too dark. It's disturbed. It's not. It's art. And I'm ready to show the world what my art can be. Okay. Part two. We never left. I'll be damned. An unfamiliar car looking ahead and you see the front door. So this is after. Most beautiful rhythm you've ever heard. Okay. Alright, let's uh, go to the front door. You walk to the front door. It's been left unlocked. You know that he's distracted inside. What the fuck? Open the door. You need to sabotage his ride. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go to the front door. Alright. I swear to God. Chill the fuck out. What the fuck? You approach the car. It's nicer than yours and you hate it. The interior is clean and put together. You're such a slob. It's disgusting. The tires look freshly pumped full of air. Axe the tires. He thrusts the wedge of the axe into the car's tires. They let out a satisfying pop and hiss. He's not going anywhere. Go back. Alright. Do the front door. Open door. We for sure just heard a fucking door.
This is fucked up. <clears throat> All right. We about to die. Oops. Uh, examine hallway. Step into the hallway. The carpet is dull. The hallways are planned. To your left is the bathroom, and ahead and to your right is the bedroom. Above you is the attic. Behind you is the living room. Bruh. I didn't even notice this. Let's figure out what's up in the attic. That's right, some, that's right, he said there was somebody up in the attic. Examine the attic. The attic door is locked for now. You can't let him up there yet. Surprise, the hallway is behind you. Okay, uh, examine bedroom. The bedroom is my own, it's my one safe space, all of your work, all leading to this. Look at him typing away, reading line by line, he looks so peaceful. You know <laughs> that of anyone you know, he'll appreciate what you're doing, he'll understand the artistry of it all. You shouldn't go in, it's too soon, you want this to be special, the hallway is behind you. Okay, uh, examine hallway. Examine bathroom. Blue wallpaper in this bathroom feels like it's part of the past life. You can't wait for that life to be over. Not much for you to do here. Behind you is the hallway. Okay. Go back. Okay, we're all the way back. To your left is the bathroom. To your right is the bedroom. Above you is the attic. Oh, wait, go back. Uh, if we can't go back. Then, how do we examine the rest of the place? Oh, I'm dumb. Examine living room. For some reason I was reading it, but I was like, thinking it was what we were just at. Step into the living room, you stand aside for a moment, and allow the memories to flood back, it's horrid. To your right is a laundry room, further in the front. View is the dining room, to your left is a hallway. Okay, examine. Laundry room. Smell of detergent fills your nose. More laundry will need to be done soon enough. In front of you is the coffee room. Examine coffee room. Coffee room is so quaint. A small box of a room with a table and chairs. It's made to relax. Behind you is the laundry room. Beside you sits the circuit breaker. In front of you is the kitchen. Okay, circuit breaker. Throw circuit breaker. Uh, shut off circuit breaker. Uh, examine circuit breaker. Turn off circuit breaker. Oh, not yet. Give him time. The laundry room is to my immediate right behind me as the kitchen. Okay, examine kitchen. Just as you remember, it feels so nostalgic. So many hours spent reheating frozen TV dinners. Ahead of you is the dining room behind you. It's a coffee room to your right is the garage door. Oh, examine garage door. 
wood boards you had added still stand sturdy against the wall. Maybe it's time for him to see. Ahead of you is the dining room. Okay, let's axe. Wood boards. Come and see. You're a fucked up motherfucker. I would get the hell out so quick. Oh, we found the cat. There's a fucking body bag here. There's two fucking body bags here. There's three fucking body bags here. Four fucking body. What the fuck? He's right there. You think we appreciate this shit? Step into the living room. You can feel every moment of anticipation rush past you as you become aware that you're creating a masterpiece. You're a true artist in every sense of the word. To your left is the hallway. To your immediate right is the laundry room. Ahead and to the right is the dining room. Examine hallway. Examine attic. the scene dim the lights okay examine hallway examine living room okay examine laundry room Examine coffee room. Examine circuit breaker. Shut off circuit breaker. Turn off circuit breaker. You flip the switch, there's a metallic click before the world becomes drenched in darkness. Everything is perfect, the laundry room. Okay, examine... Uh, laundry room. Or let's just go back. Okay, go... Uh, examine... Laundry room. Examine living room. I keep it misspelling. Examine hallway. Examine attic. Felt the same feeling as this. This is special directly opposite of you. Across the room is a man at the computer. You want to get closer. I, I can't leave. Get closer. Step over. So closer to the man. He appears to be sweating, shaking. You know you've done it. This is your man. 
yikes. You feel your chest tighten with excitement. You've never felt this way before in your life. It's addicting. You stand in front of the center of the attic. Man, it's still in front of you. You want to get closer. Take another step closer. The man's posture is tightened. You can almost see the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. He's so pure, so helpless. Your mouth waters. You stand a step away from the man. You want to get closer. Your smile hurts so badly, you grip your axe so tightly that your hands begin to burn. You've never felt more alive. You try your best to contain yourself, but you're verging on animalistic euphoria. You're sure you can feel your hot breath on his neck. You're so... You're an artistic genius. You stand right behind the man. Okay, leave the fucking man alone. Uh, say hello. Uh... Be nice. Okay. Get closer. Get closer. <laughs> Alright, and the swing axe. Axe the man. Ever so carefully. Over your head. You think to yourself. We never left. What a fucked up motherfucker. And I said I related to this bitch. That's creepy as fuck. That's fucked up. We never left. Well, there you have it. Pretty good game. If you want, check it out on uh, itch.io. If you uh, like the video, please uh, be sure to drop a like and, I don't know, maybe subscribe or something. And yeah, it's free. Damn, that felt bad. I probably won't include that. I might include that. I don't fucking know who gives a fuck. Anyways, there you go. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, we never left. I'll, I'll leave the link. Alright, peace.